Um, as Dee said, I'm here representing the Las Vegas Jazz Society, and our founder, Monk Montgomery, is also being honored today for his contributions to the American art form of jazz, which should be recognized, and we are doing our best to keep that going. Monk had a dream. He had a dream that he could pull all peoples together that were interested in jazz music. When he came to this uh, city in the late 60s and early 70s, he came via a heritage of jazz music. He was the eldest of three brothers, all of whom were very well renowned in the jazz idiom. His uh, brother, Wes Montgomery, guitar player, has been world renowned, and his younger brother, uh, Buddy, also was a vibe player and keyboard player. The brothers played around Indianapolis, Indiana, and then went branching further into the United States and indeed all over the world. For a while, uh, Monk, before he came to Las Vegas, played, uh, uh, as I said, around the Indianapolis area and then moved to Seattle to be with his brother Buddy. And they formed a group called Master Sounds. And this was a very, very uh, popular group in the 50s and 60s. From there, Monk started to play with Cal Jader and eventually found his way down into Las Vegas. When he got to Las Vegas, of course, jazz player that he was, he started looking for others that would be amenable to be able to play with him and his musical uh, heritage. And he found a lot of people that were willing to and very capable players in jazz, but there really wasn't any place that was supportive of jazz. So he made it his dream to be able to get jazz into the hotels, find positions for people who wanted to play jazz to be able to do so and get paid for it. He started out in 1975 uh, by convincing a group of local musicians and businessmen and just plain jazz fans, such as myself. I was there at the beginning. And uh, he formed in a nonprofit organization called the Las Vegas Jazz Society. And in 1975, they had their first event at Judy Bailey Theater at UNLV. In 1976, he formed a first board of educators, oh, not educators, sorry, my teacher background is young, a board of directors. And on that board was a representative of uh, UNLV, Hank, Frank Gagliardi, who was then director of jazz studies, a uh, number of musicians, John Lindner, with a dear friend who has recently just passed. Uh, Jay Cameron, Dan Ski, uh, myself, and a couple of other people. Uh, we, that year, had our first annual jazz picnic, and it was co-sponsored by the Musicians Union uh, 396, uh, 369, I'm sorry. Uh, we also had our first big concert with Sarah Vaughn. And from there, we just started going crazy uh, for a period of seven years. In 70, 1977, we were granted uh, our first donation grant from the Nevada Arts Council as well as the National Endowment for the Arts. And we also had a group of supporters called Ambassadors at Large. And these are well-renowned uh, musicians that went out into the world spreading the word of jazz. Among them, Marlena Shaw, who still lives in town and is still spreading the word. We had Joe Williams, Eddie Locke, Ja Davis, James Moody. Some of these names probably sound familiar to you. B.B. King and Carl Fontana. Some of the concerts, going from one concert uh, in 76 to 
Uh, we had Max Roach and Herbie Hancock at the Tropicana. Then Chuck Mangione came in to uh, celebrate jazz at the Aladdin. Jimmy Smith and Super Sax came uh, to the uh, Trop. Some of these pictures are on display also from these events in our uh, display out in the lobby. So take a moment and look at it and see some good times. <laughs> you can only imagine. Uh, and May became proclaimed by the mayor of Las Vegas to be Jazz Month. We still celebrate May Jazz Month, uh, and, uh, and it's still going strong. Some of the events are also listed in, the, in our Jazz Notes magazine out there. Uh, at the Jerry Lewis Telethon that year, the, the band that played had Jazz Society t-shirts, not the same as these, but the early evolution of the Jazz Society t-shirts. And Down Meat Magazine featured an article, How to Step Out into Jazz Society, which used our model for a role model uh, held up to the United States as to how to form a jazz society. In 1978, we branched out. We had Stan Getz at the Sahara. Um, these are among other people and venues. We had jazz at the DI, the Sands. Started to be a lot of jam sessions around. Pogo started their jazz, uh, their jazz jam session. Some of you might have been there. It went for a number of years. At the, the Festival of, Pop, of Arts at the park. There was uh, jazz at Nellis Air Force Base, Tender Trap, so on, more and more. Monk's dream was being recognized. In 1979, the governor of the state of Nevada proclaimed May was Jazz Month, but now it wasn't just in Las Vegas, it was statewide. We thought that was quite an accomplishment. So, also, we had a series of tributes to late greats of jazz musicians. And the first was Duke Ellington, and Kenny Burrell came in for that one. The second in the series was a tribute to Billie Holiday, and Carmen McRae was able to do that for us at the DI. Um, and then the third was dedicated to John Coltrane, and there were uh, a, a jazz professors group from Rutgers uh, who came in for that and John, uh, John Hendricks as well as Bill Bear, Barry and Freddie Harvard was also at the DI in 79 and Monk began his reality of jazz show. It was an interesting format in that he played jazz tunes. He also played requests but if anyone was in town playing any uh, important or even well-known locally jazz players. He would invite them and they would have uh, talk sessions on the show, sometimes evolving into jam sessions. In uh, 1980, we were celebrating our fifth uh, year and there were, for Jazz Month, 53 free Jazz Month activities going on. We now had jazz at the DI, Hacienda, Sahara, Buddy Rich be, uh, appeared on our behalf for uh, uh, fundraising at uh, the Sahara. We now had Landmark had Jazz, the Sands. We had late night sessions at the Musicians Union, and KMPR began to uh, feature jazz on their radio. We also began something that we call the Western Federation for Jazz. And it was our dream that we could have a coalition of all the states west of the Mississippi who would uh, work together because the National Endowment of the Arts was headquarters, of course, in Washington, D.C. And they, it was a lot easier for their jazz associations east of the Mississippi to lobby for funds. And we needed something so that we could present a united front out here in the west. So there were representatives from uh, almost all of the western states out here. There were from uh, uh, Portland, uh, let's see, Leonard Feather came in from uh, LA, 
Uh, there was even a representative who came in as far as Alaska. And uh, it, the basis of the coalition was really begun. And in 1982, we had a weekend conference, and things really began to coalesce. And it was starting to really take off. But unfortunately, in May of 1982, Monk passed. He had been very sick with cancer for a long time. Uh, he hit it well. We knew he was ill, but he was such a dynamic force that he kept all of us going and uh, projecting ourselves to do as much as we could. It was hard to say no to Monk. Uh, he'd get the ideas and he'd have such a dynamic uh, positive personality that he just made us all keep going, doing things that we never thought we could, never even dreamed of. But it was his dream, that was his legacy, that he was able to impart the dream. And here we are, 40 years later, still trying to keep it going. We've had our ups and downs, but I really think that we are on the right track and that we'll keep it going for another however long. We're like that energy Energizer bunny that keeps going and going and going. So we're so happy that you're here today with us to help us celebrate his legacy and his music. Thank you so much.